Uh, hello, everyone. Thank you for the warm welcome. Um, I'm Žarko Ptiček. I'm, I come from uh, Ptiček Legal Services. And let me first tell you that I'm honored and privileged to be in front of you and to give you this lecture. Uh, the title of the lecture is, you can, you can read it, right? Um, so let's start. Is this familiar to you? When you see a logo like this and uh, something and something, you know, surname and surname, legal services. Yes, it sounds familiar. Uh, it looks like a name of a fan some fancy law office and uh, there's a lot of money in it. Not in this particular name, I mean in law offices. And uh, point is the law, the lawyers and law offices just follow the money trail. Uh, there is, a, Bill Hicks would say, big dollars in this. And uh, let's see how big dollars lead to wars. But uh, first we need to clear some things. Uh, this is comparison between copyright and patent. We call it intellectual property by one name. Um, there is also trademark that may or may not be considered as uh, intellectual property. But copyright, as uh, you see, is exclusive legal right uh, given to the author uh, to do with his, let's call it, uh, whatever he made, uh, whatever object or um, whatever artistic uh, presentation he made. Uh, unlike that, the patent is something that actually works. It has to fill some standards to be declared as a patent. But the patent is basically a license for patentee to use that product, to use that machine, to use that code uh, issued by government or governmental agency. Uh, the difference between uh, those two is also in their duration. Uh, copyright lasts 70 years after the death of author. He, actually his inheritance, or whoever holds copyright, has copyright on that uh, artistic form. Unlike patent, 20 years after registration of a patent, it becomes general thing, okay? So, to make this clear, copyright is a given right, okay? And a patent is something that you have to file, that has to be recognized as a patent, okay? So, these two, where, where, where does, how are we recognizing that? Where does the law actually come from? Okay, um, I think this is what they teach us and at the first year of uh, law school, they tell us at the lecture, please imagine an hourglass and uh, speaking in front of the um, digital audience, uh, I imagine that this is the hourglass that you um, are familiar with. So, um, there is upper part in this hourglass that is so-called meta law or natural law, where the, the source of law, okay, um, and then there's the constitution. That very, uh, at the neck of our glass, that is what they call it transcends the meta law or natural law into existing law. And the highest uh, act, 
highest legal act of any country is its constitution. And from there, the law is derived, and from there, the bylaw is arrived. Or um, here in Serbia, we, we call that uh, sub-law acts, uh, if I can translate it like that. Okay, so let's think for about it for, for a little bit. Uh, at, this is what they teach us at the first year, okay? But at the very first week of the whole of, of the law school, uh, they introduce us to so-called golden rule, and that may uh, that means who has gold makes rules. Okay, I, I'm just telling you as they taught us. Of course, you will not pick up this at any lecture, but after the first week of any law school anywhere in the world, you will understand this. Okay, so, um, the golden rule has nothing to do with our hourglass and our uh, assumption where does the law, law come from. In the, ancient, in the, ancient, sorry, in the ancient times, um, that, as they call it, meta-law, that upper part of hourglass, um, was called God. So, um, the smartest or the strongest guy imposes himself as the leader and declares, usually written in stone, by the power vested in me by God, and then makes laws that he wants people to obey. Since then, nothing changed at all, okay? Um, but we just have the different perspective of God, and we call it gold. Um, what is the law, almost? Um, the people who have gold, who are imposing themselves um, as lawmakers, um, made several laws, or <laughs> almost laws. Uh, first of all, there was Stop Online P Piracy Act. Uh, after that, there was uh, Preventing Real Online Threats to Economic Creativity and Theft of Intellectual Property Act. Shortened PIPA. Okay. Um, they are... Um, the first one was very mild. Uh, they simply uh, recognized that everyone who um, streams any kind of content that doesn't have a license, basically a license, has to go for five years in prison. And for some reason that didn't pass. Uh, the second one, uh, the PIPA, uh, was uh, a little bit on, 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 on the brighter side and they said uh, rogue websites dedicated to the sale of infringing or counterfeit goods. Uh, you see here uh, how they shifted. First of all was everyone who streams. Now it's the websites that are selling. Okay. So, first of all, it was everyone. Now only uh, of those who are doing uh, for the profits, okay? And uh, let's call it rogue websites. I don't know what the definition of rogue website is. Um, I don't know the definition of rogue state is. But when you tell it, when you uh, write it in law, it makes it official. And then you have to find the answer what rogue is. 
And that uh, definition of rogue will be given by judicial practice. Right? Okay. So basically, by giving any vague term, I can put anything inside that term by legal practice. And then it will be imposed on everyone, depending on the definition. Okay? Uh, but this was nothing. Th those two were kind of mild and mildish. Uh, what came next was uh, anti-counterfeiting trade agreement. And this was huge. Uh, because, first of all, they, uh, nobody kn knew how this document came to be. It was not on any uh, legal forum, it was not on any debate, it just popped up in, into existence. Okay? So, first of all, law doesn't come like that. Okay? You might imagine where did it came from. Remember the hourglass? Okay? Um, it was to, sub, to um, give us international legal framework uh, in which all um, copyright infringements will be prosecuted. And it basically said like this, uh, if you are a country, uh, you have to embed these rulings into your legal system. Okay, in Serbian, in Serbian constitution, it is like this. Um, first there is constitution, then there are international treaties, and then there is law and other domestically made stuff. But no international treaty can be uh, valid in Serbia if it is against Serbian's consti constitution. So, uh, this ACTA, let's call it agreement, uh, was in several cases a breaching the rights of uh, the Serbian people that were given, and I say given, or written, by in, or in the constitution. Uh, what was extremely um, clever about ACTA and its writers, um, they said, now we will make a governing body <coughs> that will uh, be a kind of something like a World Trade Organization for copyrights. Okay? And they said, like this, in ACTA agreements, it, it, it's written like this. We will make the first, uh, it's called commission. And the commission will then make the rules and amendments to ACTA. In German language, this is called Kompetenz, Kompetenz. It means you are to write your own rules. It simply doesn't work like that. Uh, in 2010 and 11 and 12 years, no, it doesn't work like that. It has to have that hourglass. It has to come from somewhere. You cannot shift the hourglass every time you need something to be changed. So, uh, what was the result? Basically this. Uh, it was, um, uh, I'm using this just as a, um, uh, not trying to infringe any trademark that this may represent now. <laughs> okay. Um, what was this? This was uh, a massive um, protest against it. And what ACTA did, and actually was good, it, uh, awareness was risen. Awareness was risen at that level that everyone wanted to participate, everyone wanted to have this uh, Guy Fawkes mask and pretend that he's a 
hacker and anti-acta anti -acta activist. Okay, it was a hype. But from legal point of view, um, it was a battle won. First of all, ACTA didn't pass, uh, but it was just one battle. The war wasn't. Will ACTA come back? Okay. Uh, there are 12 member countries of this Trans-Pacific uh, Trans Partnership. Now, do you see there's nothing intellectual, nothing in the name of this treaty has no suggestion whatsoever that Australia, Brunei, Canada, Chile, Japan, Malaysia, Ma Malaysia Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, United States and Vietnam are members or trying to be members of this. Uh, just a month before last, there was a meeting in Ottawa uh, that they are trying to push this. And uh, Obama's administration is really pushing for this. And this is very interesting because it makes it on a smaller scale. Uh, they don't say, we will make one big international body that will monitor everything. No. They are just grouping the, let's call it powerful countries like Canada, Japan, United States, Australia, uh, that are economically um, very developed and influential on the rest of the world. And uh, the idea is to group group, 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 and then join together. But this grouping does not always help. Each and every one of you has its own and direct approach against this. I'm sure. Each and every one of you. You know how to uh, encrypt, sorry, you know how to encrypt, you know everything. <laughs> Uh, some of you are using PGP, some of you are not using Google, oh, sorry, none of you is using Google, okay? Each and every one of you has direct approach. So, like mirroring that, they did it too, okay? This happened yesterday. Uh, Tweetbit or Tweetpic uh, is shutting down uh, by September 25th. Um, you can find the official explanation, but um, it was written by Twitter to Tweetpeak that they are infringing their intellectual property. And only that was enough that Tweetpeak decides to shut down. They didn't want to give their brand or to melt in the bigger company. They just couldn't afford it. And they just said, okay, we, we will die. And um, everyone who is using Tweetpick will be given a chance to pull uh, the, their um, uh, pictures or what they have from there, okay? From, uh, from those of you who don't know, USPTO stands for United States Patent and Trademark Office, that actually uh, Tweetpick filed an application uh, five years ago. Okay, but you see here the golden rule. Uh, yeah. They have uh, uh, created the application to USPTO. Uh, were they uh, granting the trade, trade, the trademark, or is the, pro is the process still going on? Okay, uh, about trademarks. Um, 
this is more about copyrighted patents, but there are two types of uh, registering trademark. Serbia has this. First, you apply. And when you apply, we as a governmental agency will see if that is eligible to be a trademark. Before you apply, you can do, um, in Serbian it's called resher, um, in English it's called research. You can file application before filing an application and ask them, is this good enough? Is this distinct enough? Okay? And they will, they, then they will tell you, yes, we will register that. Okay? Um, in Croatia, is everything is um, valid from the day you apply. And if you find your trademark uh, copied, um, you can uh, take it to the court. I think that Serbian system is better, not because the, the Croatian is other one, but I think that the Serbian system is better because it prevents court cases, although it knocks the money out of the big uh, copyright and patent law offices. What happens is this. You can have a dispute in front of that governmental agency. And if that is not resolved, you can take it to the court. But basically, when you take and look at the registered trademark here, you know it's valid. There is nothing similar, okay? Um, so you deterred me a little bit. Uh, now I want to get yes, back to... There are two points in time. The point where you... Uh, yes, uh, the, the point is... And the point where the when, when, okay. when it's recognized, but it's recognized, this is... Uh, it doesn't have so uh, so-called uh, rector or active. Uh, no, it means that it was good all along. So when you filed and you, it was approved a few months afterwards, it was registered from the day it was filed. Okay, so this is approvement. It's not like let's see if it's good or not. Okay. And this is very important because the one who files first has um, advantage, okay? Also, the one who is using that trademark in, um, let's, let's call it a foreign fair, okay? If you use it to sell some type of goods or uh, service or whatever uh, in foreign country and you use it at the fair, then you can um, have an advantage even if someone filed before you, okay? Okay. So to come back to the slide. Yes. Yeah, uh, had a, a tweet pick a lot applied in 2009. Yes. 2014, which is now. Uh, uh, I have to, I, I have to break this to you. Uh -huh. I did not apply. I was not uh, counsel. For, for, for this, you know, I, I know it may sound strange, but it wasn't me who, who was doing this. Uh, all I can see is the outcome. Um, can you see that, that there is possibility, and I'm sure that living in this area of, of the world, you do understand that uh, it can take a lot of time uh, for us to think about it, you know, and more time and m more time and... You understand? The golden rule. Okay, speaking of gold, how much does it cost? Well, uh, the ultimate cost is your freedom. Believe it or not. Um, how can this possibly be a freedom question? Well, simple. First of all, who has gold? 
corporations or the people that are giving money to the corporations. Okay? Who has more cash? Okay, I know there, there are some corporations um, that are huge, overwhelmingly huge. Um, but then again, they are huge because someone gave them that money. And who was that? It was us. Okay. Um, I'm proud to know man. He's a soul fighter. Uh, his name is Ognin Uzelats. And he said that the corporations, and I will explain this later, um, are just an imaginary in-between layer between the artists and the consumer. Nowadays, when you think about it, there is absolutely no obstacle for us to pay Madonna or Metallica or, I don't know, Lady Gaga or whatever, for what they are doing directly. You have a Madonna website, you launch music from there, you sell it from there. Okay? Porn stars are doing it. No problem. Absolutely no problem. Each and every porn star has its own website, has its own content. Um, I'm not advocating for porn. I'm just I'm just saying that there is imaginary, there is imaginary layer that Ognjen Uzelac recognized that is in between. Okay? Parasite. Yes. Also, I had to put uh, this quote somewhere, so this was a good place. Um, but it fits here nicely. Um, George Carlin, God rest his soul. Did I say God? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, personally, for him, when it came to rights, uh, he thought that either we have all the rights or no rights at all. And this applies to copyright also, and patents and everything. Either we are free by nature, by natural law, or we are slaves, okay, by imposed order. This is too philosophical, of course. Um, because George Carlin was a philosopher. Um, and he also saw this, that uh, rights aren't rights if they can be taken away. What actually happened? Um, does anyone of you remember how much copyright lasts after the artist dies? 70 years. 70 years how it came to be 70. Well, it was 50. And then it was prolonged. Why? Because Disney asked for it. Okay? So, if we make a rule that this is 50 years, and after 50 years we say, no, 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 what we said, 50? No, let's make it 70. And after 70 years, we'll be like, oh no, let's make it 113. You understand? Golden rule applies again. So, let's talk about this imaginary layer. There is this core, yes, 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 before we start, okay? 70 years uh, in the USA? Everywhere. Everywhere. Even in Serbia. <laughs>
Do, do I need to tell again? <laughs> Which company? Uh, yes, yes, but, but in, in practice, how, how, how does it work? The, the, I, I thought I explained it with an act agreement or even before. It just gets done under the pressure of money. Um, if you are asking me, uh, personally I know you are German and I know that you are interested in the process. Process every time changes. They don't do it, I mean they, now I, am, I, I sound like a theory or whatever. No. Um, they simply push and push and push and they see where is the least resistance. And w once they saw, this is, th this is very simple. Let's say they pushed it in, in USA, okay? Now the other countries see they, their um, artists are going to USA. Why? Because they have more rights there, okay? So they embedded the same practice in their own laws. Also, it gets done by national, in, sorry, international treaties. Okay? You heard about VIPO and such things, okay? So, it is either, oh look, they made a marvelous thing, let's do the same. Or, um, there is a conference and we will have benefits and this and that. Okay? And uh, this 70 years is basically um, those corporations on the artificial breathing, on artificial lungs. Okay? But the point is, I, I, I want you to, to comprehend this very clearly. It can go on forever. Okay? For as long as they have money. Okay? So, let's call this your right. Okay? You think you have, as an artist, you are given rights by law. And your right to copyright means that you are the sole owner of what you made, of the artwork and that you can transfer just part of those rights. Some of those rights aren't transferable, like right to claim authorship, right to have a name on each and every copy of artwork, if possible, okay? Those rights aren't transferable. The economic rights are. So, uh, now there is this layer. You, the, the artists in their brains think, I don't have a right if I don't have big company protecting my rights. Not knowing that those rights are protected by law itself. Okay? There is no need for middleman. There is no need for this, this artificial layer. There is one artist in, in um, Balkans um, who refuses to be a part of this scheme. And he never signed any contract um, with any publisher. Uh, his name is Johnny Stulich, and um, if the author has rights, he has the right not to give economic rights to any company, right? And he chose not to. And um, he is the sole example of uh, the author or the artist doing this. I wish I could see more examples of that. Uh, Cypress Hill um, also did a, an experiment. Um, they put their new song, one from the album, for free 
on their website. And well, what happened? Nothing. People who are listening to Cypress Hill were very happy. People who don't were also very happy. It doesn't, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't touch them in any way. But there is this imaginary layer that actually isn't needed, but everyone accepts it as if it was necessary. The point is, your rights as an artist or authors do exist even without these corporations. Okay? Now, where is Serbia? Um, geographically speaking, Serbia is there. And um, when talking about global developments, Serbia is also there. <laughs> it's almost invisible. Um, it simply has... Do I need to tell again golden rule? It simply has no economic power to make any ruling of such as this. But there are some people within Serbia who do. Okay, so globally, Serbia is there. <laughs> Serbian law, uh, just uh, just to make it clear for the local NSA, I, I love my country. <laughs> but my country doesn't love me. <laughs> and I will speak, okay, what I think. So, make me think different and I will say different. Okay? Serbian law says what is um, object of copyright? Okay? Uh, just a quick in Serbian because I need to translate this. Okay? Original intellectual or spiritual creation of an author. Um, it has, uh, uh, there's translation intellectual and spiritual. Um, I cannot give a good wording in English language, but I can say it in Serbian for Serbian audience. Originalna duhovna tvorevina autora. Um, I'm sorry, but I just quoted a, uh, Article 2 of Serbian copyright law. I don't know what is funny in that, but okay. Uh, there are several questions. Actually, there are just two. Uh, first of all, what is original? Okay. What, what can you possibly consider original? And the second is what is intellectual? What is spiritual? No material. Uh, I would agree with you, but this is exactly to uh, prevent, to give rights, for instance, for sculptures, okay, for uh, artwork that is actually tangible, okay? It's not like intangible things as your code, okay? But let me make it clear, code can and is copyrighted, can be and is copyrighted. Why? because it's like a novel. It's a text, basically. It's just not, not, it's just not in any spoken language. It's in your C++ or PHP, HTML, or 
what have you, Python or no. yeah, C hash. Okay. So. If I smash this bottle in a certain way, okay, is it an artwork? Is it protected by copyright? Is it original? Oh yeah! You cannot find two or identically, you know, smashed bottles. Is it spiritual? Is it intellectual? Well, if I was not a lawyer, if I declared myself artist, and I, if I, for instance, make my work of smashing the bottles, PVC plastic, you could call it spiritual and intellectual. So, basically, um, for, for the German audience, uh, you know what is legal standard, okay? And uh, for the rest of the world, it is called general, general clause. It means that it will be determined on the actual case. So, if there is any dispute about this, about if, let's see, this work is an artwork, it, it, can it be copyrighted? Is it original intellectual, intellectual creation of an author? Um, then it, that dispute will be settled at court. And this gives uncertainty. When you see something, you cannot say if it's copyrighted or not. And that's great for the ones that are claiming the copyrights and selling copyrights and trying to get the money from you claiming that you infringe their copyright. Okay? Um, there's just a little side note here. In Serbian language, of an author it means that you are a person, meaning human being. If an elephant or dolphin writes something, it is not, by, by law, it is not recognized as, as something that can be copyrighted. Okay? Uh, one question, is there a country in the world which recognizes Animals and, uh, uh, Germany. Germany. I will tell you. Because uh, uh, recently there was a case of a monkey that stole a camera. Yes. And made pictures of itself. Yeah. The, the, that dispute was yeah, mon uh, mon selfie monkey. Yeah. <laughs> Something I, I, I do often. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it's those pictures when you take and you look like monkey. Yeah. Um, point is this: it in that particular case. Are, is the audience familiar with this case? Monkey stole a camera from the photographer, shot himself, and the photographer claim authorship on that. Okay. No, you are not the author. Why? Because it can be only by a person. Did you click that? No. So you are not the author. It is not the question if a monkey is an author. Monkey cannot possibly be author because monkey is not recognized as someone who can have rights at all, not copyrights. Okay, he is not a person in legal terms. But the point is, can I claim um, copyright on a photo that you make, not me? 
No. Why? Because you made it, not I. So this was the dispute. And what I wanted to, t to say about uh, German, um, in uh, Bundesgesetzbuch, um, let's call it, uh, let's call it um, their civil code, um, they have an article, um, I will paraphrase, I think it's, it, it goes like this. Animals are not things, but for the purpose of understanding the law, we are treating them like that in this legal text. So that's what Germans did in their legislation. So mass platforms for the individual needs. That means um, we will have several, I don't see uh, like many platforms uh, for many distinct platforms for uh, general purpose um, copyright materials uh, given there. But uh, since um, iTunes, okay, that each and every song has the same value, that's a platform. And that's a huge step in this. Uh, although it's done by corporation, I think it's a step in right direction. Uh, we just need we already have that platform. We call it the Internet, not the iTunes. The Internet is all already there. Why are we using that platform given, I don't know, but each and every artist, especially mus musicians um, and digital photographers, and can put their artwork or copyright work on the Internet without any middleman already and I think that this model would be a clear winner would be a clear winner or all of us will lose thank you for the attention Um, I did not make any corporate infringement <laughs> stating any kind of uh, trademark, but you may or may not guess where does this come from. Yes, any questions more? Shoot. No. Um, <laughs> question about the idea of companies being primarily parasites or imposed middlemen. Uh, you said parasites. <laughs> he said parasites, but anyway, I'm just repeating it so he can sue me. Uh, because in Serbia, parasites are some, some, some other, you okay. know. Um, the thing is that although we now have maybe the infrastructure to make uh, payments directly... Uh, I do. Uh, don't you think that when the big companies will feel threatened, they will impose a more sanctioned kind of way of even any, any form of things? You already see it currently with banking. I see where you're going. Uh, I will say, I will say, uh, I will say, I will answer your question uh, just to point you to the oil companies right now, because the oil is being depleted. And there is just so much oil. So it's also like this. The model is based on our perception of the law. And there is only so much perception you can have, at least I hope. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. You cannot fool all the people all the time. Okay? But they do have so, Come back to your question. Yes. <laughs> I made you forgot your question, no. right? Forget <laughs> it. The question was, don't you think that they will just um, make it a lot harder to actually have yes. the freedoms that we currently have? Absolutely, yes. Who has gold? How far?
far do you think they can go with that? Will they actually impose laws that make only sanctioned transactions to artists possible? Till here. Okay, good point. Okay. Yes, I agree. Uh, I'm glad. <laughs> Any more questions? Okay, I will excuse. Ah, oh. yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> maybe it's less a question than, than a remark. I, I wouldn't be too much surprised if the uh, 70 year period in Germany at least will be extended in the foreseeable future, uh, probably before May next year. Uh, for the very simple reason, in May next year it's 70 years since Hitler died. And since he had no children, all the copyrights of all his books fell to the state of Bavaria. Uh, and they were actually controlling the distribution of these material by copyright laws. Uh, so they are very, very much interested in extending uh, the 70 year period because it runs out next year. Uh, I, mm -hmm. um, I understand what they are trying to do, but it, it is always the same. For the greater good, for the greater good, you are giving. You're, you're right, so it, oh, do you want your children to read Hitler's books? No. So you have to prolong this period? No, I just have to take the books away from them and teach them that they are ridiculous. That's all I have to do. I don't have to uh, burn books or I don't have to uh, impose uh, more copyright uh, time, time frame for copyright to be... Um, at knowledge, I just need to teach my own kids what is good and what is bad. That's not so hard, is it? No, it's not, but it, as it fits other needs, as we know by now, right? You talked about it. it um, other people are interested in extending this period as well. So I wouldn't be too much surprised to see it prolonged in Germany. Uh, and the other probably interesting thing is that there, there is a, a freedom of information platform in Germany which is called Fakirstadt, so where you can ask the the government for documentation, for information. Um, and uh, once they got a reply with the documentation requested, uh, but said, you are not allowed to publish it because it's copyright material. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so um, he, he My reply to that, uh, uh, excuse me, my reply to that, you see how serious states operates? <laughs> okay, it's, 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 it's serious. Intellectual, you mean. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, well, the, the German court didn't agree. So they, uh, they actually ruled against the government. But there's no intellectual property uh, to be protected in official documents. Um, you mean it has no original no, it's probably not intellectual, intellectual or spiritual value in it? Okay, I'm just making an artwork here. Yeah, and I will finish my lecture now. If there are no more questions, oh, there is. Bring me the fourth one. Yeah, I'm not giving up on the, the original uh, line of question that I had. Uh, so, uh, we can go forever. It's me. <laughs> sure. Uh, so, um, in uh, most countries, you uh, create something and then you uh, apply for trademark or software. Patent, yes. Something that uh, really uh, tickles us, uh, yes. the hackers. Um, and then there is a certain period of time until uh, that uh, agency body, whatever, decides to uh, 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 give the trademark. Or the can I? Can I? I'm sorry for interrupting, and this will be my final words in this lecture. <laughs> um, why on earth? Would you patent a code that will be, become a general thing in 20 years when you can enjoy a copyright that will become a general thing 70 years after a death of the programmer? And the code lives, I don't know, five years? Is it usable after five years? I mean, uh, there's a Fortran 77. Is, is, is anyone programming in Fortran 77? 
Yes, yes, yes. I know. I know how much it, it's used, and it has huge libraries and everything. You understand? But why would you omit yourself to the 20 years of uh, filing uh, period after filing when you can have 70 years after you're dead and you don't care and couldn't care about it? Okay. Please, I need you to understand. Corporation cannot have copyright like an author because it is not a person. Okay? And now I do truly and honestly thank you. All right.